welcome everybody. Um, thank you for joining us today. I'm Susan Whitus, the director and curator of T-Space. Um, <laughs> we are very excited to share our T-Space expansion with you today. Um, I was just looking at our 2015 tea book. This is not an advertisement, but. Um, and this is like the yearly compendium of, of all of our programs from last year. And I came across in the back a photo of Stephen Hall and Jim Hall um, breaking ground on T-Space in May of 2010. And um, little did we know at that time um, what T-Space would grow into. And it's very exciting and moving. Since then, we've made, and I counted it up, 16 exhibitions with catalogs, um, with 17 commissioned essays in the catalogs, um, 17 poetry readings, including four annual poetry awards of $5,000 each, 15 concerts, four permanent outdoor installations, four yearly compendiums, and a book. I'm, I'm actually very, very moved and thankful for our brilliant artists and um, great team of people that make it all happen. And especially, I would like to thank Stephen Hall. It's really Stephen's vision, generosity, and energy that has enabled T-Space and this amazing expansion to occur. Um, and we are also grateful to Stephen Hall Architects for sponsoring today's program at T2 Reserve here, the 28 acres, the Exavin House, the T2 Gallery that you've probably all seen, the catalog, which we hope you'll get, and um, the SHA-sponsored opening today and the summer hours to come. Uh, and now I'd like to introduce Stephen with our thanks. Thank you, Susan. Um, I'm going to bore you for five minutes because a lot of people didn't understand what the project was. And the gallery is the process to get to that. And the process to get to that started with philosophy. We were enamored by the work of Peter Sloterdyke. If you don't know his work, he's produced three volumes in the last 10 years about the contemporary issues of philosophy. The first one is about the self, the bubble born in the womb, it's a sphere. The second one is the exploration of the world, the globe. The third volume is Poetics of Plurality, Foam. Bruno Latour called this book the most important work in philosophy of nature to appear since the eruption of the ecological crisis at the forefront of our consciousness. Hal Foster said, from the microsphere to, of the uterus to the macrosphere of the nation state, at once polemical and holistic in approach, Slaughter Dyke allows us to come to terms with the ever retooled systems that structure our lives. So we started the project around in the studio around this, and you'll see those models down there where we're struggling with the possibility. And at the same time, by a coincidence, this land came up for sale. It was supposed to be a five house subdivision and it's on the way to our house, our lake house. And I said, oh, this is terrible. To make a long story short, we, we bought the land to keep it a nature preserve. And this is, the, this is from one year ago, on the 4th of July, we had a ground, there was nothing here, nothing, zero. And I, I read this at the opening, you know, it's less than one year ago. Keep, to preserve the natural landscape and wild animal habitats of 28 acres, which were to be subdivided into five suburban <laughs> house plots, open to gradually form an architectural sculptural landscape as a nonprofit extension of T-Space. Think, meditate, and reflect on creating what has never been before. Realize a small 918 square foot house for living for artists in, in the experimental project explorations of Venice. And, and the thing is, What's really exciting is there's a lot of experiments here. That, that's, that's not stucco, that's recycled glass. It's never been done before in America. The, the company in Germany is called Poraver. So that's very interesting. That was not easy to do. That's a new kind of solar panel uh, that you see there. It's a fabric. It glues onto the roof. That All those solar uh, panels that will provide enough electricity for the basically the, I don't know, like two-thirds of the house went up in a single day. 
it's all geothermal heating and cooling. And anyway, um, it doesn't have any bedrooms. Zero bedrooms, but it sleeps five. <laughs> but I have to say that the actual, the actual hero in this whole si situation is the amazing thing is this entire work, that is the T2 gallery, and this was realized in 11 months by Javier Gomez and his team, his brothers. Which is, and Dimitra, Dimitra Zaccarelia, who led the research team and helped design the house and create, curated the exhibition, will now give a special, a special award to Javier. So, hello everybody. I'm so really happy that we're all here today to celebrate the opening of both structures and Javier built both of them. And they are our uh, new embodiment of the ideas of this space. They are uh, these uh, new hosts for all of these arts and activities that we have at this space that we all share with a sense of urgency for the arts and culture and architecture today. And I think it's this sense of urgency that gave wings to Javier to fly and build it so well and so fast. We made, we made a plug to commemorate his love for the work. Javier, please come up. <laughs> he deserves it, and so does the whole team and everybody who contributed to make it. Everybody, I don't have to speak to, to everybody, Thomas and uh, Peter and the team on FSHA. Everybody's here. You can talk to them and hear more about the building. In the back of the book, you can see their faces. Everybody. <laughs> and But before we broke ground on both of these structures, Stephen and I walked aside with the poet, Robert Kelly and his wife, Charlotte, and it was Stephen's desire to have the first dedication of this site, these 28 acres, to be an obstructus, to be a poem that would probably provide inspiration of what is going to happen in the site that it actually did. So I'm very honored to introduce Robert Kelly to read his first uh, public reading of his work, The 28 Phases of the Moon. Ooh. 